Hi, and welcome to this Friday book review. If you're new to this channel, I'm Oyster. If you like these book reviews, please consider subscribing. It would make me happier and that is the goal for this channel. We're in the middle of a Norwegian summer and what's more Nordic than to read a quite depressing novel. Norwegians love crime fiction and most Norwegians read crime fiction in the summer as well. I think this is because we don't want to get too happy and too uplifted by the warm weather and the lack of clouds. We are kind of a weird people. So today we are talking about this book. It is Vigdis Hjort, Arv og Miljø. Directly translated, this is Heritage and Environment, but in English it's called Will and Testament. Of course, Will and Testament is quite a good description for what the book is about, but I think that uh, Heritage and Environment, as the book is called in Norwegian, well, I, I just like that title better. It gives you another way of looking at the book uh, before and after reading it. Because the book is about the will and testament, but it's also about family and family ties and how you interact with the family you got. And that's why I sort of think that uh, Heritage and Environment is a better title. And of course, it's the author's title, so that accounts for something. The book was published in 2016. And if you can look at the cover here, it's a tree with a off-zone branch. And that's a pretty good description of what the book is about. So why did I choose to read this book? I first heard about this book in the news, and that's where I picked it up. Because this book is quite controversial in Norway, and it set the debate about what is fiction, and what is art, and what is real life. So even though the author did not say that this book was about her own life in the beginning, other events later would point in that direction. That it was indeed a fiction, but non-fiction. All this controversy made me really intrigued, and of course I also thought that it would be a valuable thing to have read the book that everyone talks about at some point. And it's a fairly new book, so I sort of felt like I could uh, be a part of my own time when I read the book. I don't know if this is a feeling because uh, the book is based on real events, but I felt when I read the book that it feels kind of intimate to read. You feel very engaged and the characters are uh, displayed in a very real-like way, if that's something you could say. But I'll go more into that after I've uh, given you a short summary of the book. I've been hinting a little bit about this in the intro, of course, but the book is about a family of six, where the main events evolve around a testament being made in the family. And as you can imagine, the people are not agreeing on who is going to get what, and that's what the main storyline is about. Two of the siblings have split up, uh, very very early, Bagliot and Bord, and this is Bagliot's story. So Bagliot is the one who tells the story throughout the book. On the cover, as I said earlier, it it's an off-zone branch, and this could be both Bagliot and Bord, because both of them have cut the family uh, ties earlier, many many years ago, but now this inheritance drags them into the family again. So the four different siblings are very different. They are different in many ways, both in how they have had their relationship with the family, if they have left or if they are still a part of the family and talks to the parents. And they are different in the way they are archetypes, characters. Uh, they react to sorrow in many different ways. They react to conflict in many different ways. And this is a very interesting thing to, to read about. The book is very intriguing, and even though the plot is quite simple in the start, it develops quite a lot throughout the book, and it's never boring, because you always get the feeling that you're missing some kind of information, or that you get new information that makes it more and more complex throughout the book. So if you ever feel that the tension is leaving the reading experience, you always get dragged right in right afterwards. So there are many things we don't know when reading the book and there's a lot of things that you get to know uh, in the book. Of course this is told by one person, so that's one thing you think about when you read it. 
that you get one person's story and you lack some information uh, from the other siblings. This is of course normal in every person's history. You have your own version, but someone else have a different version of your life as well. So what did I think about the book? The book was uh, very easily read. It's about 300 pages that I skimmed through quite quickly. There's no chapters, but uh, there's a lot of blank spaces or pages with uh, nearly no texts. So it's quite uh, pleasing for the eye to read, if that's an expression. It really was a powerful novel to read. I felt a very strong connection with the author and uh, sympathy for the author. And as a reader, I feel like it's a very personal book. It's hard to describe how, but uh, it's sort of in the way things are written and uh, how engaging it is, it feels like it comes from a very sincere place. I think this is one of the more useful books I've read in many ways. And that's because when I read it, I felt that I reflected a lot on the relationship I had to other people. Because the book describes in very detail how one thinks about other people and that people don't know exactly what you have been through in your life. That's something that I always uh, try to consider when speaking to other people, that you never know the full story. But as I know, and maybe many of you others, it's not easy to think about what people have been through uh, when you're in the middle of a discussion or a fight or anything else for that matter. So I really like this book. I would recommend it to everyone. To me it's a powerful book that has an important message to convey and I think a lot of people would get a lot out of reading this book. In the aftermath of this book, Vigdis' sister actually wrote a novel, which was supposed to be her side of the story kind of book. I have not read that book and I'm not sure if I'm going to do so, but this sort of manifests that this book is about uh, Vigdis herself and her family, because why else would someone write a book to answer it? So both a very interesting book and an interesting story and interesting to see how this book sparked a debate in the Norwegian public. I think that was it. If you liked this book review, please give me a thumbs up. It makes me more happy than you could imagine. And I hope you have a great day. Follow this channel for more book reviews in the future. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.